Hi everyone and welcome to What on Earth. In a previous video, we talked all about how parasites avoid the host's immune system. Today, I am making good on my promise to link it into fetuses developing in the womb. What is a parasite? From an immunological perspective, a parasite is an invader. It's anything that is non-self, that is, it doesn't have the same surface marker molecules, or antigens, as the body's own cells. Anything that has a non-self antigen is the enemy, and must be destroyed. Or, so says your immune system, anyway. And this works out pretty well for the vast majority of the time. All those nasty pathogens that come into your body, from viruses to bacteria to amoeba to worms, they all come in and displaying their own unique antigens. Your body recognises them as foreign, and eradicates them before they make you sick. So far, so good. But there are a few instances when this can be a real pain. In the last video, we talked about one of them, when you get an organ transplanted from another person. There's another big one, and that is when a mother is pregnant. Think about it. The developing fetus, we can't call it a baby till it's been born, is completely inside the mother's body. It basically leaches food and oxygen from the mother's bloodstream, taking all that nourishment and providing no positive contribution whatsoever. It even dumps its waste products into the mother's blood for her to clean up. More to the point, a fetus is antigenically different from the mother. Remember, a child's genes are a mixture of the mother's and the father's. And, since all proteins are coded by genes, the child will have some of its father's proteins, or antigens too. These antigens should be seen as foreign by the mother's immune system, and trigger an all-out immune attack. Indeed, this actually does happen occasionally, in a condition called eclampsia. The mother's immune system rejects the fetus, and mounts a massive attack, resulting in nausea, vomiting, swelling up, seizures, even comas. It's a serious and life-threatening disorder for the mother and the fetus alike. But most of the time, none of this happens. Otherwise, obviously none of us would be here, and overpopulation of the Earth would certainly not be a problem. Usually, the mother and the fetus get along just fine, and manage not to try and kill each other. How does this happen? The immune system is bewildering in its complexity. It's an entire branch of biology all on its own. And it's fairly safe to say that nobody knows it all. So anything that can entirely defeat such a system also has to be quite complicated. In the 1950s, Medawar proposed that the main mechanism was a barrier between the mother and the fetus. Now, it's well known that the blood of the mother and the child don't mix. They're separated by a membrane, and nutrients and oxygen diffuse across. Medawar proposed that the barrier must be blocking the mother's immune cells from attacking the fetus. I mean, if you can't get to it, you can't attack it, can you? That sounded like a great explanation. Sure, there were maternal antibodies in the fetus's circulation, helping to protect them from disease. But the antibodies couldn't be targeted against the fetus's antigens, unless those immune cells happened to get a hold of a sample of those antigens. And with the barrier in place, that just wasn't going to happen. The problem is, later research showed that the barrier wasn't completely solid. They found immune cells, like macrophages, which are absolutely huge, going in both directions. The mothers went into the fetus, and the fetuses went into the mother. Not a lot of them, really, but it was enough to show that the barrier thing wasn't a good enough explanation. There are a few promising leads out there, with active research on them still ongoing. And get this, one of them is that the fetus releases molecules of NKB with phosphocholine attached, just like the nematode worms we talked about before. NKB with phosphocholine is found in the womb normally, but if there's NKB in the mother's bloodstream without PC attached, it's a significant risk factor for preeclampsia. Another mechanism is the activation of regulatory T-cells in the mother. Regulatory T-cells, or T-reg cells, are a type of immune cell that keep the aggressive ones in check. They calm down the killer T-cells and get them out of their berserker fighting mode after infection is over, and they take care of the defective cells that try and attack the body's own self-cells. There's some evidence that there's something in the seminal fluid that stimulates the growth of T-reg cells that recognise the father's antigens and stop other immune cells from attacking them. This fits in quite nicely with what some other studies have found, that eclampsia is mainly a disease of first pregnancy, and after that there's a reduced risk. But if you change partners, the risk comes back. Now be warned that there are some contradictory studies out there, but this information does seem to be generally accepted. Then there's another clue that involves self signaling molecules. One study at NYU found that although the mother has as many killer cells as she usually does, they don't actually get called to go to the fetus. Now usually, when a body tissue finds itself in contact with an invader, it sends out signaling molecules called chemokines that attract or recruit these big burly immune cells to come and deal with them. You can think of these molecules as sort of a call to building security. Hey, come get these jokers out of my office. But in the deciduous cells, which is where the mother's tissue and the placenta meet, the genes that code for these chemokines actually get turned off. It's done epigenetically, which is really interesting all on its own, but I'll save that for another video. Anyway, these cells in the uterus are silenced. They can't signal for help. Their phone lines have been cut and they've been taken offline, which seems to be quite a neat way of handling it. 
There are all sorts of interesting experiments out there, like the one where a pregnant mouse had a piece of tissue implanted into a uterus from the father, and it was tolerated and survived for a long time. But it only works if the female mouse was currently pregnant with that male mouse's young, which tells us that it really is specific for the father's antigens, and not just the general shut down the entire immune system type thing. Anyway, that's it for this video, so thanks for watching, and remember to spread the science.